Welcome back to Create Craft Costume. I'm Ashley. I'm Cheryl. And here we think creating or crafting is as close to magic as we're gonna get. So for a very magical Easter, we are making our own personalized Easter baskets. And we have designed three different sizes for you. You will also learn how to use Decor Bond to help keep these sides up. How to adjust your machine to sew on different size buttons and my favorite, how to make a handle that does not require sewing a tube and turning it right inside out. Not my favorite thing. Much easier way to make handles. So let's get, get sewing. sewing. The material for this project is pretty simple and we have designed three different sizes for this basket. In order to pick your size, you're gonna look at the base and see how large you want your finished basket to be. Then you're gonna cut out four different squares. Two are fabric and two of them are a material called Decor Bond. Introduction to Decor Bond, a member of the Pellon family. It is a fusible interfacing. It is designed specifically for craft and decor items. It is not recommended for apparel. Its purpose is to give a stiff, crisp finish that will allow craft projects to stand on their own or lay very flat. The size of the squares that you cut out is determined by the base size in the previous chart, but once you have all four cut, we're ready to get started. So the first thing before you iron on the interfacing is take any wrinkles out of your fabric just to make sure that doesn't f the wrinkles don't fuse into the interfacing. With Decor Bond, you are again looking for the shiny side, but the shiny side is not as obvious on this product as other products. You can feel it slightly. So our recommendation is, is put it under a light and make sure you get that shiny side down against your fabric. With Decor Bond, water is very important. Give your interfacing a quick spritz once it's down on the fabric and then lay a very damp press cloth over the top before you start. Always use a warm or medium iron setting and then begin your pressing. All of these tips, by the way, are included in the instructions. And this next and most important one is also in the instructions, but you have to make sure that you're paying attention to it. <laughs> you have to press for 10 to 15 seconds. Don't move it, don't wiggle it, don't, it, it, it is on, connected for at least 10 seconds. She worked on this piece of fabric for four minutes and 30 seconds and it was almost not adhered at all. So take your patience with this one because the end result is totally worth it which I have no patience. So this is a nightmare for me. I was thinking, oh, I'm here 15 seconds. No, it was about five. So put a movie on, put music on, do something, but you have to do it the 15 seconds. That's all there is to it. But nothing said that you couldn't be ingenious and use all your irons available. So she sped up this process her way. I just pressed my way. <laughs> Once you have placed an interfacing on each fabric square, you're ready to start your marks for your pattern. And this bright dotted line is our beginning dart width. That changes based on the base that you chose for your basket. So for example, if I chose a four inch base here, I would choose a four and a half inch dart width that I would measure on each side of the corner. Then the solid line in the middle is our fold line and the fainter lines just help you see where the pattern comes together. Now that you have successfully survived the adhesive process of decor bond to fabric, congratulations to you all, it's time to begin the basket. We have chosen to make the small four inch basket. So we have our 13 inch square here. We're going to lightly mark corner to corner diagonally both directions. This line will be the fold line for the darts and will allow you to line them up. Now marking across this entire square is really easy on 13 inches, but when you get to the 19 and 28, I didn't have a measuring tool long enough, so I just stuck within the beginning dart width box and I only marked the fold line inside that box as you are about to see moving forward. 
This is the beginning dart width box that Ashley was referring to. I've got this lined up on the four and a half inch mark because that is the beginning dart width of the small four inch basket. So I've got that lined up right there. This is where we're going to sew. And I'm going to continue marking that on all four corners. Then you're going to do exactly the same on the other one. And if you want to double check, here's our four inch base from corner to corner and four inch base at the top because this is going to now fold up like this. All right, now all your marks are made, we're going to turn this into a basket. The easiest thing to do is fold it diagonally from corner to corner and bring the two edges of the square that you marked, the beginning dart box, together. I'm using the clips here, it seems to work quite well, so I clip it where those marks are together, crease it along that fold line. You're going to essentially make that square into a triangle, and you're going to do that on all four corners. So if you don't have these handy clips, pins are just fine, they work just fine, whatever works best for you. And this process is the same regardless of what size basket you're doing. The final thing is always sew these darts down from the edge down to the center, top to bottom. And other than the placement, these darts are exactly the same as what we did in our bow cozy tutorial. So make sure to check that out if you want more dart tips. Now to the sewing machine. And depending on your machine, sometimes when you're sewing several thicknesses like this, it's easier to start on the fabric and back stitch and then go forward as opposed to sew on to the fabric and then back stitch again. So it just depends on your machine. So make sure you do back stitch, sew all the way to the end in a straight line and back stitch at the bottom. Repeat four times. Repeat four times. Okay, now it's time to remove those ears. We're all taught to trim the seams way down to reduce bulk. This is one place that I would caution you to leave a little bit larger seam, perhaps in half an inch, five eighths inch. That is to make sure that the dart doesn't pull out and it gives more stability to the side of your basket. Now your first square is complete. Don't forget you have another fabric square that you need to take these exact same steps on in order to be ready to put your basket together. All right, now we have our two boxes. One is right side out, one is wrong side out. That is in preparation to finish this basket. Now, do not press the seams open. No, 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 no. They need to stay just the way they are. Now we are going to put them right sides together. So when you look at this, you will see only wrong sides of the basket. Now, as you're lining these up, you are not going to line up the seams. You are going to have them be slightly off. One seam pressed to the right, one seam pressed to the left, closed seams. The reason for that is that's going to give you a nice square edge if you want a square basket. Now, if you prefer to have a round basket, you can line the seams right up, open up those seams if you wish. But on this one, I want a nice square basket. So that little break in the seams is going to give that to me. Then once they're down inside, you've got to push your thumb down into the corner, make sure those corners match up so they are even at the top. Same process as we did in our bowl cozy tutorial. Get those two right down in the bottoms together. So once you offset that first seam and pin those seams down left and right, follow that same pattern because the offsetting will follow along on the other three seams all the way around the basket. The final thing to consider is the opening to turn these baskets. So where my fingers are, you're going to leave that an opening. I would stitch past the seams to anchor those down and then leave the rest of that opening. Do not sew it closed. At the machine, start where you're going to anchor that first seam. Back stitch and continue on around the basket. And you'll thank yourself later because turning the seams inside out is a pain. So it definitely is. anchor them. Anchor those down. Now, I made the choice to do this with the open arm on my machine. I would not do that again because the length of my arm was longer than the length of the basket. So it did not sit just flat on the end of the arm like I thought it would be. So I ended up having to kind of pull it around through the, the uh, presser foot and it did not sew a straight seam. So the lesson I learned is on the smaller baskets, I would not use the open arm option because I did have to restitch that part that went crooked. 
So continuing on around to that fourth seam, anchor that last seam down and then stop, back stitch and stop. You want to make sure you've got a large opening to turn this because the decor bond does take considerable room to turn that right side out. And turning we are. The easiest way to do this is to reach into that opening and pull one of the end corners through and continue to pull it through. It's not going to be easy because we've made it stiff on purpose. So it is going to be a little bit of a challenge because we have a relatively small opening. Now, if you need a tool to help you push it through, go ahead and use a tool. Just make sure it's not, things, not something sharp like scissors that's going to poke a hole in that fabric. That would be disastrous. All right, once that inside piece is pulled all the way out, you're gonna pull out those corners to make sure you've got them out as far as they can be. Then as you're turning, putting the one inside the other, you're going to feel inside and make sure those seams lay flat the way they were stitched. So you've got one going left and one going right, and you can just feel through that opening on all four corners. Once those seams are flat, laying the way they were stitched, it's time to put the lining down inside the basket. Push that down inside, making sure that those seams still lay flat the way they were supposed to be. Then close that opening, turn those raw edges inside to match the seam line, and press those seams down all the way around the basket. You may be wondering why I'm pressing it like this, those seams flat, when I constructed it to, be, to have square corners. The process is the same at this point, whether you're making a square basket or a round one. If you're making a round basket, this is the end of your ironing. If you want a square basket, there's one more step that takes place after you attach the handle. Over at the machine, I'm going to close that opening. You can do it by hand, but the advantage to doing it by machine is you can continue that stitching all the way around the basket to make sure you have a nice sharp edge around the top of your basket. All right, on to the handle. There are multiple ways to do a handle. You can cut a long strip, you can use ribbon, you can do however you want. We have a unique method of doing a handle with the interfacing already built in. Remember the corners that you cut out of your basket. That's what you're looking here at here. These are the four corners. We're going to sew those together to make our handle. That way it is already interfaced and the seams in it keep that very secure four over the top of your basket. This also may answer your question of, well, I don't have to have those corners in the initial pattern, and you're right, you don't, but this is a way that you can maximize the fabric and material that you've already used. Alrighty, back over at the ironing board, we are going to press those seams open so it's nice and flat. Now, traditionally, you would fold this in half, sew that long seam, and turn that back out the right way, which is fine. However, this decor bond and those four seams are going to make it very difficult to turn that. But that's not the truth as to why I do the handles this way. I don't have any patience. <laughs> so the fact of turning that inside and out took way too much time for me. So we even if you cut a new piece and interfaced and turn it inside out, she would still do this method. I would because it's quicker and easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold those two edges towards the middle and just press it down. Okay, so to finish this handle, we are going to get some decorative ribbon and we are going to lay that over that center gap, which will secure the handle, add some a decorative touch, and give it two rows of additional stitching for stability in that handle, all in one fell swoop. So over to the sewing machine, sew down either side. You might be asking, what about those ends? Hang on, we've got another tip as to how to finish up those ends. Also another tip, she picked satin ribbon and didn't pin it. If you wanna know my experience with satin ribbon, check out our uh, leprechaun hat video in the I card above, but just make sure that you are starting straight. If you don't, the whole rest of your satin will be crooked and you can see it because of the light. So just a fast tip there. Now about those fraying ends. First thing, trim those up, clean off all those threads, make sure they're straight right across before we attach it. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna sew it right along there, and then we're gonna bring it up and sew it again. Oh, I like that. 
Now, the easiest way to do this is to put this here and take this around the back and sew it this way. This way you're not fighting with the band. You wanna make sure the right side of the band goes against the right side of the basket. Okay, before you put that under the presser foot, make sure that handle is centered in between the two corners. And again, as a reminder, right side of the band is against the right side of the basket. Otherwise, your ribbon will be on the underside, not Which the top. Which is not what you want. So at the sewing machine, you are going to sew close to the raw edge of the handle, backstitching at the start and at the end of that. Then you are going to go around to the other side, making sure that the band is around the bottom of the basket. Repeat the process on the other side. Very important that you backstitch on both this both ends of that handle for security. Also do make sure that it goes under the bottom of the basket because that's going to enclose those edges inside the handle. So now we have the, the handle attached, but we have not covered up that raw edge, which is what we're going to do right now. It's up to you to determine how much ribbon you want to show on the outside of your basket. This is probably about an inch. So we're folding it back up. We are going to add a little button to the side of that. We just love those embellishments. If you don't wish to put a button on there, you can just sew across the top of that handle to secure that one more time or bar tack on either side. Whatever you choose to do to cover up those raw edges. Most machines have an automatic setting for sewing on buttons. Wouldn't it be great if that automatic setting always matched the button that you've chosen? That doesn't happen, particularly with a smaller button like this. So I rarely use the automatic settings. I always use the zigzag. Adjust the length to zero and the width I adjust depending on the button. To do that, you want to put the needle down through the right hole on the button and then slowly put the zigzag over to the left, adjusting the width of that zigzag to fit your button. It works out much, nice, much nicer for me, so that is my go-to. In the sense that less broken needles. Absolutely. Ta-da! The sewing is done. Final thing is, back to the ironing board. So remember when we were constructing this basket, we offset the corner seams because we wanted square, a square basket. Here's where we're going to make that happen. Fold along those seam lines, press down that line with some steam to set that square corner. So as you can see on the left side, that is those corners are left round. So if you don't want the square corners, you don't need to do this step. But there you can see the exact difference between the square corners and the round corners. Both of them are beautiful. Hi, us again. So we wanted to take a second to show you the difference between our sizes. This is our small, this is our medium, and this is our large basket. Now in the next clips, I'm gonna show you how I constructed this using the same technique. But the difference will be is we're going to demonstrate how to showcase a strong directional fabric pattern like this chocolate frog here. And why can we do this? Why does this matter? Because I'm super lucky and I'm getting trained by a master tailor. I am. I was trained in England, taught there, and made two promises to my teacher. One, to never compromise my classic methods I learned and to share my knowledge with others. I'm sharing it with Ashley and hopefully with you. Enjoy the video. So let's showcase the beauty that is this fabric. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Here I'm putting together a medium sized basket and I'm only showing you some of the steps because everything was exactly the same as you saw previously. And unlike other projects, I didn't run into any large hiccups. So instead, I'm just going to focus on what was really different about mine. One thing I do want to mention, make sure your hole is big enough to turn that decor bond inside out because that stuff is stiff. It's no joke. But the main difference really came when your basket was actually put together. Due to the nature of this print, which is very symmetrical and runs one way, that means you have the print going different directions on your sides as you see here. It is right side up on one side, and that means the opposite side is upside down. Then the sides of the basket, the print is actually running sideways. There is nothing wrong with leaving it this way, but you have extra fabric pieces anyway. So we decided to make a pocket out of two leftover squares, 
and we're going to place it on the side with the upside down pattern. That way it gives the illusion that the pattern is the same around the basket. Plus, you get extra storage. Now let's talk about the handle, which is definitely the most different from the first basket. And the reason for that is because, of course, you can use the squares that are left over, but I did not like that the patterns don't match up. It's too chaotic for me. I also wanted my basket handle to be as long as possible so that I could hide the sideways print on the sides of the basket. So to accomplish this, I'm using the natural pattern that is on this fabric. I could tell that I could get one line of chocolate frogs to be on both sides of my handle. Now, if I just cut one strip and sewed it as it is, eventually it would be upside down on the other side because it is curved. So to fix this and make sure that the direction is the same on both sides of the handle, I put a seam at the top. So I cut that one long strip in half and then put right sides together and sewed the base of the handle. Then I added some grow grain to cover the seam at the top and moved on to my back. Because this handle was based on the measurement of the fabric pattern, I don't have measurements to give you. I knew I wanted the backing wider and I cut it wide enough that I could turn the edges under and I bound the handle together. Once finished, I applied the handle the exact same way as the first one. The edges are hidden under the handle itself and the only difference is I made sure it went all the way from top to bottom, emphasizing that fabric pattern. Thank you for watching this tutorial and if you know someone who wants to make their own personalized basket please give it a share now of course with it being easter you can do any easter decor you want but i tend to have a flair for the character fabric so in our next video we're going to be showcasing a harry potter theme and as a thank you for sticking around to the end on this one we're going to give you a preview of some of the baskets that you will see if this interests you, make sure to give a subscribe and a like, and we will see you in our next video. Take care. That's a stinking cute bag. Skit. Bag skit. Bag skit. <laughs> <Bag> skit. <laughs>